So at the end of our last stage of uh, removing duplicates, which are uh, after doing alphabetic sorting, uh, we did alphabetic sorting and removed titles such that the prefix is the same except for the last few words, right? This is These are the types of duplicates that we removed. At the end of it, we were left with 17,593 products. Now there are other types of duplicates that we discovered while we were looking at data. Let me explain you what those duplicates are. Again, remember, it's very, very, very important for you to look at data. So since we're since we are using since we are using titles as our most uh, since we'll be using titles extensively, you have to go through these titles and understand what's happening in full detail. Uh, if you do not look at your data, you'll never understand what's happening. This is something that a lot of people overlook. So always look at your data, always try to understand as much about your data as you can. Right. So now let's let's uh, let me show you an example. If you take these two products, these two products are more or less same. So the differences in titles are here. Here you have word women's here. You have ladies here. You have pink XX large shirt. Right. While here you have light blue XXL. Right. Except for this, it's it's exactly the same product. So if you look at this Ultra Club, I think is the name of a product sorry, is the name of the brand, the classic wrinkle free long sleeve Oxford shirt. Okay, this is the actual description. It's a classic shirt. It's a wrinkle free. It's a long sleeve Oxford shirt. It's exactly same for both these products. Both these products only differ in just the color. And instead of using the word women's, um, the probably the seller or when they listed this product, they use the word ladies here. Now you might ask why is Amazon doing this dumb thing of of not using the same word of women's here. What happens on Amazon.com a lot of times is a uh, lot of products, a good chunk of products actually on Amazon.com is are sold by third party sellers and merchants. So if, if you're a seller, you can list your product on Amazon.com and Amazon.com will sell it on behalf of you, right? If you're a third party seller, your objective is to sell as many items as possible, right? And people discover products using Amazon search where the type some text, right? So probably the seller who listed both these products thought for this product, probably having the word women's is better for this product, probably using the word ladies is better because it's, 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 it's a, it's a formal shirt. Probably people are searching with the word ladies formal shirt or ladies Oxford shirt rather than women's, right? So the third party sellers have full freedom to give whatever title they choose, as long as it abides by some rules that Amazon, Amazon gives you. Right. So these are free form. So the third party sellers probably gave the third party seller who is selling this probably gave the word women here, the word ladies here for these two different products. But if you look at our actual problem, always remember our problem is given a query image or a given a certain not image given a query product, we want to recommend similar products. OK, and for that, we are using the product title as the most important uh, variable or feature. Right now, if, if, if this is my query image, if this is my query uh, query product, if I give this as my result one, if I give this as my result one, that's not very good because it's exactly the same shirt with in a different color in different size. Right. It's 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 not the best outcome for me. Suppose if I'm looking at this product, if you can recommend me other shirts, because probably I'm on the pink page because I really like the pink shirt. OK, so it might be more useful if you show me a pink color shirt which is also a wrinkle free. Uh, I mean, not not from the same brand. Sometimes sometimes I don't want to see the same brand. Sometimes I may. Right. So if you have. So in this case, if you alphabetically sort, the problem will not be solved because Ultra Club, Ultra Club is same. But W, but, but at the very start itself, these two words are different. So when you alphabetically sort these two, these two titles could go to different locations, not necessarily consecutive locations. Right. So how do we, so let's look at another example here. Okay. So alphabetic sorting cannot solve this problem, right? So now let's look at another, other issue here. So if you look at these three products, they're exactly the same product except for one keyword change. And this keyword is not at the end. If this was at the end, our, our previous stage of removing duplicates would have taken care of it. The fact that they're not consecutive to each other has spoiled the show for us, right? So exactly, it's basically University of Utah, three fourth sleeve raglan, I think t-shirt, right? Except for this, this single change, right? Which is 
sometimes they're using the word cool sometimes unique sometimes new because probably it's a university t-shirt people will search for cool university t-shirt or new university t-shirt or a unique university t-shirt and things like that right so how do we remove this how do we remove these near duplicates they are not actually duplicates right and they they were not removed when we did alphabetic sorting and removing based on the last few words being dissimilar right here as long as these two products are as long as they are very similar except for maybe one word or two words here and there how do we remove them let's look at some simple algorithm to do it it's a very very simple we are actually doing a very simple brute force algorithm actually so i'm loading my data my 17k apparel data i'm loading it into data let me explain you how this algorithm actually works okay suppose suppose i have a data suppose i have titles okay let's be call this t1 t2 so on so forth tn right now imagine if i write a for loop if i write a for loop such that i compare every pair so i take i comma j where i can go from 1 to n and j can also go from 1 to n okay now i'll take every pair take every pair take every pair of i comma j valid i comma j where i goes from 1 to n and j also goes from 1 to n right so for every pair of titles for every pair of titles find out find out how many words how many words do they differ in for every pair of words for every pair of titles find out how many words they differ in okay if if a pair of titles t i t j differ in let's say uh, let let me go through the code so that it's easy um, so if 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 a pair differ in okay less than 3 words okay if the count is less than then remove okay if 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 they differ in less than equal to 2 words okay or you, you can pick any number here you can pick 3 or 4 okay let's say if they differ in less than k words then you declare them to be duplicates and you keep only one and you remove the other let's assume that's what we do let's assume just for simplicity now the quick question here is our n is some 17k roughly because we have 17k titles right so how many pairs can you form right if you have 17k items how many pairs can you form you can form nc2 pairs you can form nc2 pairs right right this is simple combinatrix if you have if you have n if you have n items how many pairs can you form with them it will be nc2 right so what is nc2 n into n minus 1 by 2 right so now how many what is the value of n into n minus 1 by 2 so we have about uh, let's look at the exact number so we have 17000 uh, let me just go up 17593 right so if i do 17593 into 17000 okay by 2 n into n minus 1 by 2 right i'm getting a number which is roughly let's look at this number this number is 154 million right so the number that i get here is i have to do 154 million comparisons between titles and for those of you who prefer the Indi indian number system this is about 15.4 crore sentence completions sorry sentence comparisons so this is about 15.4 crore title comparisons which is not small and remember this is only for 17k products because your nc2 became 15.4 crores or 154 million title comparisons and this will take a while to run okay so let's do it uh, let's go back to our code and uh, if if you are if you are choosing to run this code even on 17k right this code takes about an hour to run even on a decent computer right so what i would recommend here is if if you're up for it run it go take a lunch break or a dinner break or a coffee break a long coffee break or a chat break and then come back your code will finish now remember at the start i told you that we are not using the whole 183k products okay we we shrunk this 180k to 28k from this 28k we arrived at 17k for these 17k we saw we, we just saw that we have 154 million 154 million or 15.4 crore title comparisons right uh, that we have to do imagine if you have to do this 
I don't know what number. Suppose if I had to do title comparisons on 183,000 products, do you know how many? Uh, I mean, that will be massive. Okay, let's let's try to do it. So 183,000. I'm just putting the round number there. Okay, 183,000. Okay, how many do we get now? So we get roughly about 16 billion, right? We get we get roughly 16.7 billion, 7 billion comparisons, title comparisons, right? And this could take a lot of time. This could take a lot of time as compared to 154 million, right? This, this is like massive, right? 16.7 billion is much, much larger than 154 million, right? If, if I multiply 154 million by 10, I get uh, 1.54 billion. If I multiply it by 100, I get 15 billion. So this is this is more than 100x. This is more than 100 times larger than this, right? If this takes one hour, this could take up to 100 hours on your laptop, okay? So that's why we did not use all the 183K products. In, in the actual real world at large companies, processing such large amounts of stuff is done using much more efficient algorithms. Right here, what we're doing here is we are we are comparing every damn pair. That's why it's taking so much time. So what we are doing is called a brute force algorithm. What we are doing is called a brute force algorithm where we are going through every pair. There are much more efficient algorithms to solve this same problem of finding the common number of words. So they use data structures like inverted indexes. So you can use data structures like inverted indexes or inverted indices as it's called to actually compute to actually compute to actually compute similar to actually compute the number of differing words the number of differing words uh, in our titles amongst our titles that's what i meant amongst our titles you can use efficient data structures like inverted index and by the way inverted indexes are extremely used by almost every search company out there any company which has search it be Google, Amazon, Facebook, any company. All of the data is stored in a very interesting data structure called inverted indexes. So for those of you who do not, who, who, who might think, okay, why am I learning all these data structures and algorithms? Here is a very, very simple use case where advanced data structures can shrink these number of comparisons dramatically. Okay. So in the real world, these advanced data structures are actually, actually useful. Trust me on that. Okay. So now, now after this whole code is basically that is this whole code is basically about generating those pairs okay again generating those pairs is basically like a twin for loop this is your while loop and this is your for loop okay it's basically like like a twin for loop right so when you're doing this twin for loop you can you can get so for those of you who know about algorithmic complexity this is an order of n square algorithmic complexity if you do not understand it it's okay as long as you have understood these comparison numbers as long as as you have understood that it's nc2 and you get 154 million comparisons using this. That's that's a good enough approximation, right? But remember, this is a brute force algorithm. This is a brute force algorithm. And those of you uh, who think that this code, that you cannot wait for hours of time for this code to finish, it's perfectly okay. We give you the pickle file as usual. So at the end of this, at the end of this, I'm left with 16,042 products. Okay, after, of course, again, this 16,000 products is not perfect. Trust me on that. Okay, we have done two stages of data cleaning and data deduping, but this is not perfect, but we'll start with this. Okay, if, if I were actually doing it at a company, I would probably spend some more time removing duplicates, writing much more efficient data structures to operate on all the 180K products. Imagine at Amazon, they have millions of products, not just 180K products. Just in apparels, they have, I think, tens of millions of products. I don't know the exact number myself, but I think there are tens of millions of products that Amazon sells just in the apparels category. Now, imagine doing this title similarity for tens of millions of data points. That's the engineering challenge that some of the good engineers at Amazon end up solving. Okay, so what I do is at the end of this stage, I store my pickle file into a, I, I, I store my data in a pickle file called 16K apparel data. Those of you who do not want to wait for a long time for this code snippet to finish, for this stage of deduping to finish, you can just load this and you'll get the data.